Hi guys, my name is Jordan. I represent Growth Academy and I tutor year 11 and 12 English. This is how to absolutely dominate year 11 and 12 English. Not just how to get a little bit better or how to improve your confidence, how to absolutely dominate it. I'm gonna go through a few common questions, hopefully clarify a lot of things and give you a clear direction in terms of what you need to do in order to smash your next English assignment. So without further ado, Let's get into it. So one thing I want to do first and foremost is demystify because English being a subjective subject, it's not like maths where there's a very clear answer. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you know what it is you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to move those numbers around in order to find the correct answer. Um, so there are three very, very common questions I get as a tutor that I want to clarify now. Uh, the first is, how do I study for English? Uh, what do I even do? Uh, the next is what's in the final exam? What does the HSC paper look like? And another bit more specific question I get a lot is should I memorize essays or should I you know, try to come up with, with one on the spot? So I'll get into all of those as we go along. So how do I study for English? This is a question I get particularly by people who find they're not naturally good at English or they don't like English. It can actually be pretty methodical, meaning there can be a straight ahead set structured way to study for English rather than, you know, just being talented or just being good with words. Um, it can be pretty, pretty straightforward. One of the ways that it can be more straightforward than, you know, thinking you just have to have a great vocabulary or a talent for creative writing is using modules. Uh, modules are a vital resource to take advantage on from the very start. That should be the first thing you look at at the start of every term because everything at the end of the at the end of the term is going to relate back to that. Every text you study, every theme, every idea needs to relate back to the module. The questions are going to be based on the module. Um, it's very, very important to understand. And really, practice and feedback are essential in building your confidence and refining your writing. Think about it. Who's going to mark your tests right up until HSE? It's your teachers, right? So why not every single week or at least once a fortnight? write a practice essay, give it to your teacher, say, hey, what's good about this? Where do I need work? Obviously, if you keep doing that over and over and over again, you're going to write something that caters very, very, very well to what your teachers want to see. So keep those things in mind. The next question is what's in the final exam? Um, your final exam, as in your HSC English exam, will consist of two papers. In paper one, you will be tested on common module. You will do short answer unseen texts, meaning they'll give you a bunch of texts that you've never seen before. And you're supposed to answer a couple of short answers on that and relate that back to the common module. After that, you'll do an essay based on the same module, common module. Then in paper two, you'll have to do extended responses, three of them, in fact, on module A, B and C. So paper one, there are two major sections. Paper two, there are three major sections. By the way, when you're doing these, time management is absolutely crucial. It's really, really, really important that you're able to manage time. And that again comes back to practice. Um, don't make your actual exam the first time that you're writing under a time limit, you know? Make sure you're doing that at home. Nothing's stopping you from locking your phone setting a timer for two hours and doing a past paper. And that's going to show you, hey, am I maybe writing too, too little and I should give myself more time on each, each component so that I'm not done, dusted, my conclusion's already written, and then I've got 15 minutes left, I could have written more. Or, you know, maybe you find that you're halfway through an essay and time's up. So it can be a great way to gauge where you need to change your strategy to do the best submissions possible. And that other question I get quite commonly is, should I memorize essays? And the answer is yes and no. It depends on many factors, you know, your memory skills, your ability to improvise, your ability to make adaptations on the spot. If you feel that you're a very good improviser, if you don't need a lot of planning to come up with a, an argument, if you don't, you know, if, if your ideas kind of roll off the tongue and roll off the pen, then what you should focus on really is memorizing things like quotes, concepts, ideas, arguments, and then framing them specifically to the question on the spot. The advantage of that is you're more likely to be relevant to the question, right? You haven't planned it ahead, 
hoping that it's going to be connected to whatever question you get. If you really prefer to prepare things in advance, you can memorize an essay, but keep in mind, you have to be prepared to make quite significant changes here and there, not just keywords, but really framing whatever concepts you're discussing to link back to the question as much as possible. And your teacher and or your tutor can help you to find the best strategy for your own writing style and for your own personal preferences. So I was talking before about how there can be a pretty clear process to study for English if you know what you're doing. And that process is to first and foremost, make notes on the key aspects of each module, then to create some thesis ideas. How can the module connect to the text? And how does the text connect to the module, right? How does, how does everything link back to that overall area of study? Those are your thesis points. Then you wanna collect some quotes to support those arguments. Then you wanna annotate that quote, those quotes, sorry, you know, technique, example, effect, um, discussing the way that techniques are used, literary devices, to carry whatever message the composer is creating. Now that all your notes are done, it's time to do those practice responses we were talking about before. Send them to your teacher, send them to your tutor, get that feedback, and then implement it. Do more practice. Guys, if you do this repeatedly, you're really focused on understanding each step, getting something out of each step, not just going through the motions, and you implement the feedback that you get, Trust me, your marks are going to go way higher than they are right now. Unless you're already getting like 95, then, then they're only going to go up a little bit. Though. What can I say? So thank you guys very much for sticking with me through that short guide. Um, obviously, there's a lot more detail to get into, but this is just a quick little guideline. Um, if you like, we do offer two-week free trials at Growth Academy because we're so confident that if you experience our teaching style, you'll want to stick with us. Um, you can follow the link um, in the chat or sort of above the video if you like, and that'll take you to a landing page where you can register for a free trial, or you can just register your interest and ask us any questions. We don't just do English, we do math, science as well, and everything from K to 12. So Regardless of whether you want to check that out or not, good luck in your studies and in everything you do. Cheers.